Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for stopping by the channel. So for this video, we're going to be checking out the latest iteration of Bulova's Lunar Pilot Chronograph. So on the wrist today, I happen to be wearing the colorway that very much resembles an Omega Silver Snoopy. But of course, you can also purchase this watch in a more traditional black dial as well. And why this version of the Lunar Pilot is significant is they ended up shrinking the case dimensions from 45 millimeters down to about 43. And historically, that's more in line with the original Lunar Pilot prototype that was worn by the astronaut David Scott on the surface of the moon in the early 1970s. And the story goes is that, of course, David Scott was issued an Omega Speedmaster from NASA. That watch ended up failing him when the crystal popped off. So he ended up grabbing his personal watch at the time, which was a prototype of a lunar pilot provided by Bulova. And later on, that watch sold at auction for well over $1 million. So for the review, we're going to be checking out the Silver Snoopy version, which for me, my first impressions are actually quite good. So why don't we flip the camera around now, and you guys can take a closer look at the Bulova Lunar Pilot Snoopy in the studio. So now that we're in the studio, we can take a closer look at this Bulova Lunar Pilot Blue Panda Edition. I just wanted to quickly describe the packaging because it's pretty nice for the price point. There's a, a nice Bulova box with two cushions. So on the first cushion it presents you with the watch head on the stainless steel bracelet. And then with the second cushion you do get the Bulova two-piece leather NATO strap, which I have to say out of the box it's very supple and has a nice texture to it. You got the Bulova signed hardware. And then in addition, both this strap and the bracelet have quick release pins. So very easy and very fast if you want to swap between these two options. And that's a really nice touch by Bulova. Now I will say just handling this watch in hand, there's some substantial weight to this. I did weigh this timepiece on the supplied bracelet and sized up to my seven and a half inch wrist. This watch weighs in at a healthy 172 grams and it will lay flat on the wrist and on the bracelet it's nicely balanced out as well. You can see that um, the bracelet has a hidden butterfly clasp. It's nicely milled out, although there's no micro adjustment options for the butterfly, but there are half links and it's fairly quick and easy to size uh, individual links. I think they just use push pins. So you can just tap them out, resize for your wrist, and as you can see the uh, solid end links do have those quick release tabs. If you choose to swap this out for the uh, two-piece leather or for any other strap options you want. So here is a quick in-studio wrist shot just to show you how well this watch wears on the supplied bracelet. Again my wrist size is seven and a half inches that's 19 centimeters in circumference if you're going with the metric system here. And uh, I do think it wears quite well. Again, wears fairly flat on the wrist and uh, it is quite comfortable. It's even more comfortable on various strap options. In terms of dimensions, uh, this watch I actually measure at 43.5 millimeters in diameter. And then if you flip the watch to the side, the uh, wingspan or lug to lug distance between my thumbs is 51 millimeters and in terms of overall thickness I measure it at 13.7 millimeters from the bottom of that screwed down case pack to the top of this boxed sapphire crystal which is flat and carries anti-reflective treatment on the underside and then the lug opening for this bracelet is an even 20 millimeters now as this lunar pilot is a chronograph uh, I will engage the chronograph function by hitting the uh, pusher near the two o'clock here. Note that these pushers themselves are nicely PVD coated with a blue type of uh, coating here. And they almost look like volume rockers like you would find on like a tablet. So the tactile feel for them is quite nice. 
you can see that there's a very nice sweep to the chronograph seconds hand. And a lot of that is to do with the uh, quartz caliber movement they use here, because this is a high accuracy quartz. It's their NP20 quartz movement, and it operates at 262 kilohertz, which is actually written on the subdial near the six o'clock position here. So how quartz movements typically operate is that through the use of a battery, there's a current that causes a quartz crystal to oscillate at a very specific frequency. Normally it would oscillate at 32.7 kilohertz. This one is eight times faster. It goes at 262 kilohertz. And this allows this watch to be more accurate they rate these at plus or minus 10 seconds per year. And if you do look closely at the uh, constant second subdial at the six o'clock position, that hand actually ticks twice per second. And then the chronograph seconds hand that's engaged sweeps eight times per second. So you do get the appearance of a mechanical chronograph, but in something that's a lot more durable and more accurate, which is a really cool touch. Now rounding out the other sub-registers at the three o'clock section here, that is your one-tenth of a second chronograph function. And you can see it's currently stopped, but it's still keeping time at one-tenth of a second. It only runs for the first 30 seconds. And then your uh, nine o'clock chronograph subdial here is for your elapsed minutes up to 60 minutes here. So you can see it's about to turn over as that seconds hand just moves past the 12. The applied indexes for this watch are nicely done rectangles, and there's a lot of dimension to this dial. Uh, the main section of a dial here has that nice frosted moon-like texture to it. The indices are applied and raised above that. And then you can also see at the periphery of a dial, you have a sunken uh, running minute track around it. And the tachymeter scale used to gauge the speed and distance of objects is actually raised above the dial surface itself. It almost appears like it's a part of the sapphire crystal. So I'm very impressed with uh, just the depth and dimension to this overall watch. It's finished quite well for the price point as well. Uh, in terms of the watch head, it's pretty much all polished except for the side of the conical bezel, which is brushed. You do have an oversized and signed Bulova crown this crown is not screwed down, but you still get 50 meters of water resistant. And uh, you can actually just pull it at one stop to hack the movement and set the time precisely. I'm not going to do that in this video because this watch is already set to my local time and it hasn't deviated at all. So excellent timekeeping capabilities that you find here. If you're interested, you can just stop the uh, chronograph by pushing the two o'clock pusher there. And then to reset, you just hit the uh, one at the four o'clock. You can see that it sweeps around and then it just stays at the 12 o'clock position. Now with these types of chronographs, I don't always anticipate them having good loom for no lighting conditions, but Bulova did a really nice job here. Healthy application of blue BGW9 Swiss Superluminova that's evenly applied and I think quite potent for this style of chronograph. Now I would like to discuss the price of these watches because for me it was a little bit jarring when I saw the retail of just under 1200 Canadian dollars. For context, the previous version of the Lunar Pilot in 45 millimeters, you could routinely find under $500. Now all this to say is you should not pay retail for this watch. I went to a Bolora authorized dealer, um, Kavar Jewelers in Brampton, Ontario, and I did not pay retail. They gave me a bit of a discount. So if you want to buy this watch, do ask for a discount and you can probably get them for even more affordable prices on the gray or secondary market. In areas for potential improvement, I do know that the fan base is still calling for an even more compact chrono lunar pilot chronograph. So it would be amazing to see like a 40 or 41 millimeter iteration of this watch. And it would also be really nice if they can incorporate an automatic chronograph movement inside these timepieces in the future. But as always, I do value your feedback, so please leave your thoughts in the comments section of this video. And if you do enjoy the content, please do consider subscribing. It helps out the channel a ton. 
So that's going to do it for this one, and I can't wait to catch you guys in the next video.